What's going on, guys? It's Steve. Now, what is the most entertaining NBA final series ever? In my opinion, there are truly, from my recent memory, I'm going to do this off of my recent memory. I can't speak for the 60s, 70s, 80s. Really, can't even speak for the 90s because Jordan freaking didn't ever. I don't even think he went to game seven. Um, so, what's the most entertaining NBA final series ever? LeBron James. And the reason why I say this is because LeBron is in both of them. The 2013 NBA Finals, where I actually predicted, and I was like, let me see, I was like 16. I just turned 16 at the time. I was 16. And yeah, I showed you guys that video. I predicted, you know, saying, oh, you know, the Miami Heat are going to come back and they're going to win. And it happened. And I was like, whoa, okay. Uh, I'll, I'll explain more on that after. And obviously the 2016 NBA Finals. It's funny how LeBron is in both of them. I wonder why. Um, but anyway, so 2013, what happened? The reason why 2013 was more so exciting is because everyone thought, well, not really everyone. It was like split 50-50, but the majority of people thought the Miami Heat were going to walk all over the San Antonio Spurs, and that just didn't happen. Spurs were doing their thing. They were actually up. I believe they were up three games to two. It was game six in Miami. LeBron James had like an incredible game. He he made a three clutch three. And then he missed a clutch three. Chris Bosh got the rebound, tipped it out to Ray Allen. Ray Allen hit one of the clutchest shots, probably the most, uh, yeah, probably the most clutch shot in NBA history, probably, or at least one of the most clutch shots in NBA history, right? Uh, I think I don't I don't remember who he shot over, but he he hit a clutch shot three pointer. The crowd was going crazy. Actually, Chris Smoove. You know, I don't watch him anymore because I don't really care about 2K gamers. Oh, my gosh. But Chris Smooth, when I used to watch him because he used to play Call of Duty back when I was like a real Call of Duty head. I used to play competitive and stuff. He was there. And uh, I remember his Instagram. He had pictures and stuff. And Ray Allen hit that crazy shot. and went to overtime. Miami won. And it's funny because people say like, you know, oh, Ray Allen saved LeBron's career. He saved his legacy. How, how, how did Ray Allen save his legacy? Of course he hit a clutch shot, but that's what he's there for. That's what he's there for. People forget that, okay, what about what about Scottie Pippen saving Michael Jordan's legacy because Magic Johnson was walking all over him. He couldn't guard him. What about that? You know? You know, Jordan had shooters too. You know, Jordan had defenders too. That, that's the whole point of a team. You know, you surround your best player with the best pieces to fit his play style. You know? And if LeBron didn't have that triple-double, if LeBron didn't do what he did in the series, to be honest, the Miami Heat wouldn't have even... I've had a chance to come back from that 3-2 deficit. Let alone, they probably would have lost in like five games if LeBron wasn't averaging what he was averaging. You know, so there's that. And then, you know, I know this is a little off topic, but people bring up the topic that, oh, 2014, LeBron, you know, he sucks, he lost. Okay, look at the help that he had. D-Wade and Chris Bosh. I think D-Wade was averaging like 15 points per game and Chris Bosh like 13 points per game in that finals. I mean, and he was averaging, what, 28 eight and six something crazy like that on like 60 percent shooting from the field 52 percent from three and like 80 percent from the free throw line are you kidding me that's not his fault you know like i don't understand man uh but and then you know obviously the most entertaining probably ever would have to be the 2016 nba finals that was crazy that was that was a crazy finals the thing that besides the 3-1 deficit and that no one ever did that ever the thing that i liked the most is that we finally, I've seen LeBron do this before, but not to this extent. For example, LeBron is a more subtle type of guy. I've seen him go up to Gilbert Arenas at the free throw line. Look, if you miss these two free throws, I guarantee you, you're going to lose the game in the playoffs. And they lost, you know? I remember the, the the look that he had against Boston in game six where his legacy was truly on the line. That, it was on the line. And he showed up, I think he had like 45, 10, and 5 or something crazy like that, right? And then, you know, you had... um him against Stephen Curry in the 2016 finals I've never seen him do that to someone before and the reason why he did that is because he felt disrespected how and I was saying this the whole time how are you gonna sit there and say Stephen Curry is the best player on the planet have you forgotten what LeBron James has been doing for the last 13 years I know this is 14th year but back then it was 13 back in June for the last 13 years you're just gonna forget what LeBron James was doing he was he was doing his thing man you know, and the media, no attention. It's like they forgot about him. It's crazy. You know, I've never seen someone so under... Or pre, well, yeah, I have. I'm not going to say his name. <clears throat> Number seven. Um, you know, I've seen players unappreciated, but not to the likes of LeBron. I mean, the media literally forgot all about him. 
it wasn't like people were saying. I remember back in the day, people were saying, "Oh, I guarantee you, in two years, Anthony Davis is going to be this." I'm like, "Hey, oh, whatever." You know, I doubt it. Stephen Curry, it wasn't even like, "Oh, he's going to be better than LeBron." He's like, "Stephen Curry is the best player in the NBA. He's the first unanimous MVP. This, this, and that." And LeBron is like, "Wait a minute, you just you just forgot about what I did, what I just did to the league in the last 13 years. You're going to forget all of that? Four straight final appearances." Two for five? You're going to forget about all I've been doing? Breaking all of these records? Breaking Jordan's records? Kobe's? Larry's? Magic's? Oscars? You're going to forget about all of that because this guy had two good seasons? You're going to just let him... Okay, I'll show you. You know, and then when the Golden State Warriors were up 3-1, everyone was like, look, it's over, man. It's over. And then I made a video saying, this is how the Cleveland Cavaliers can beat them. You know, and they actually did pretty much the same thing I was saying. Obviously, I didn't watch the video because I'm irrelevant to them. But, you know, the Cleveland Cavaliers, you know, they did their thing. And LeBron James, like, he went at Stephen Curry. You know, it's not even like, and then I'll get to the Kyrie thing in a second. But he went at Curry. It's not like he was just, you know, whatever, subtle, just a look. Like, he was taunting Curry, laughing at Curry, dominating Curry. You know, even when the ball was dead, you know, if you don't know what that means, like when the clock's not moving or whatever, clock is dead. When the ball is dead, when it's a dead ball, Stephen Curry tried to dunk it and LeBron blocked him. And then he stared him down. And then in the game, Curry tried to hesitate and hit a layup on LeBron and LeBron blocked him. You know, he looked right at him. And then LeBron had that incredible block on Andre Iguodala. And then he almost ended <laughs> Draymond. That would have been the best dunk of all time. He would. He almost ended Draymond Green's career. With that dunk, you know, you guys know what I'm talking about. Game 7, I think it was like 25 seconds left, something crazy like that, you know? That's, that's crazy, man. And then, you know, the crazy thing is, is like, you know, you, you have these players. This is what separates star players from just regular players. People were saying Kevin Love is just a regular player. But the difference is, even with his struggle, he came, he found a way to impact the game and help his team win when it was crucial in crunch time. You know, his defense on Stephen Curry was incredible. You know, and then you have people like Skip Bayless saying, oh, Kyrie should have been MVP. How the hell Kyrie should have been MVP? LeBron led the NBA Finals in every single statistical category. That has never been done before, you know? So in terms of that, you know, just in terms of recent memory, I think those two are the best NBA Finals, most entertaining ever. I mean, you know, there's nothing better than watching two superstar players go at it and taunting each other and yelling at each other and i saw Stephen curry frustrated and throwing things hit someone in the face with his mouth guard he he said he said sorry he's a good guy um you know so that was that was fun to watch and then the three one come back the block the dunk the shot you know the stop <laughs> you know there's a whole bunch of legendary moments there by kevin love Kyrie, and lebron legendary performance uh probably the best finals performance in nba history and then on top of that you had 2013 the shot you know, LeBron with the triple-double. That was, you know, so in recent memory, those are the best NBA Finals ever. Another really good one, I believe it was 2008 or maybe 2010. I don't remember exactly which one. But not when they played Orlando. It was Boston versus Los Angeles. So I know it was 08 or 2010. But it was Game 7 and it was epic and it's crazy. Um, I know Boston won in 08 and LA won in 2010. But that's just off recent memory. Those are my most entertaining final series. A lot of you guys were asking me to do that. Thank you, Gregory, for recommending this video. I'm out. Oh. Keep in mind, guys. Never mind. Uh, you got. All right, I'm out of here. Peace.